them. So I'm not a particularly superstitious person, but I, in, in a lot of ways, I do believe that things can absorb their sort of surroundings. If you've got something that has been absolutely loved, it absorbs that. If you've got something that's just been treated as a machine, it will only ever be a machine until somebody can sort of love it, you know, and then uh, and then it will hopefully <laughs> develop itself. This is one of the um, more fun type of um, pipes. Well, fun visually and sound-wise, not fun to work on. I'm a mechanical organ builder, uh, and which is a bit unusual. I cover mainly mechanically operated pipe organs. They're one of the louder stops or ranks of pipes in a, a fairground organ. Um, and when you've got uh, 20 odd of those blasting away at you, it's, um, yeah, quite loud. In actual fact, when I was at school, I was going to go into engineering because I was always quite technically minded. But then it was one of those moments where I think it just, it just clicked. And I thought, there's everything that I want to do in one of these and more. And I genuinely don't know of another line of work that covers so many different things you know it's, it's furniture making woodwork mechanical engineering leather paint music instrument making the list goes on really if you was to actually f physically sit down and think about it you probably wouldn't do it <laughs> you just <laughs> you just uh, oh dear I tell most people that I'm a fairground organ builder because most people relate to English fairgrounds with carousels and uh, all the different rides, but it's, it's quite a wider field <laughs> than that. My dad inherited a big Belgian dance organ that we used to travel around. So every weekend was spent actually going out on a Friday night um, driving to the showground, setting the organ up, um, and then spending the weekend actually um, playing the organ, um, and then packing up on the Sunday and coming back home. Right from when I could walk, really, I was with Dad, running around, um, playing, <laughs> Um, seeing the organ all stripped down and in its component parts uh, and once I got a little bit older then I could actually start to help passing screwdrivers and that sort of thing to him and um, so yeah it was it was it was it was a long-term training <laughs> I was so lucky that we, we visited so many different places over the years and met so many fantastic people. We met celebrities, we met royalty, and, um, and it, was always, it was always lovely to hear the comments about the, about the instrument um, and, um, and that sort of thing. So, yeah, I've been very, very lucky, really. Um, and, and I continue to be lucky the places that we go and that sort of thing tend to be quite varied. Um, so it's, um, 
yeah, yeah, it's, it, it really, it really is uh, a, a wonderful thing to be involved with. Right. Are you ready? Yeah. What you're hearing is a live performance. It's it's a it's it's coming from obviously a programmed um, punch card, um, but what you're hearing from the organ itself is a live acoustic performance, and. That is so different from hearing it electronically or through speakers and this sort of thing. When you think that at any one time, at any one moment when an organ is playing, you might have, say, five or six notes that are playing at that one time, so chords and this sort of thing. Then when you have to think that in an organ like this, um, it's not just one pipe playing that one note you may have two or three pipes playing that note. So when you add all of that up, you may have 20 or 30 actual pipes that are playing, and all of those pipes are sending out sound waves. So those sound waves are literally filling the air. Well, if that sound's coming out of a speaker, that's just one speaker cone, or maybe two or three, that are pumping out an individual sound wave made up of lots and lots of little bits of sound, you know. This is lots of sound coming out all at once. From a, a, a listening point of view, it's actually a far richer sound than you would necessarily get from a, an amplified recorded sound um, system, so to speak. Um, you're, you're hearing effectively a live performance um, on a live instrument. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, she left me wait a bit this morning. <sighs> These instruments are a restorable instrument. There is no reason why they shouldn't be around for another two, three, four hundred years, five hundred thousand years, um, uh, if they're kept in a good condition. Um, and therefore, really, the skills to maintain them and restore them um, should be passed down um, and be able to be passed down. I hope that, that the interest carries on. Um, but at the end of the day, it's up to people like myself to try and promote the instruments um, and to make them relevant in the modern world. And, um, and that's the key to it, I think. It's sad to say almost a dying trade. They need to, they need to be more in the public eye. The instruments are capable of playing really anything. Um, there's, there's, there's really no limitations. They can play up-to-date modern pop music just as well as they can play classical or evergreens or, or that sort of thing. You can have an instrument that was made in 1880 or 1890 and you can play a piece of music that's literally in the charts at the moment on it. And, and you've got this thing which, which most people would think is incapable of anything like that, and yet there it is, playing a modern artist, um, and it's recognisable to the general public. I don't know where else you would find that, um, something that spans those generations and links you to, to that past. Process-wise with this one, um, the next stage is to make up the fillet piece which has actually got to be inserted into here. So I've got to take the width of this, cut that down, round off the edges 
and make sure it fits really nicely and then that can be glued in place. This organ was built probably about two years before the Titanic. And, 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 and here it is, you know, I, I'm, I'm restoring it. It's, yeah. it's, you know, it's survived two years older than the Titanic. When I get an instrument in that is derelict, it's, it's maybe not played for, I mean, some instruments that I've done haven't been played in living memory. And so there's an incredible sense of nostalgia and drive as a result of that to be the first person to have heard that in, in that number of years. When you think that that was 18, 1840s, you've got no, no computers at that time and, um, and that sort of thing. And, and this is effectively a programmed um, musical device, really. It's, uh, it's the iPod of the day. <laughs> so, <laughs> Yeah, quite a clever, quite a clever system. So yeah, I've got the, uh, I've got the task of putting it all back together. <laughs> but um, yeah, poor old thing it is. In your mind, you're you're thinking to that end result and what it's going to sound like, and 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 being that first person to hear it. But equally, with other instruments that come in that maybe have played, um, but you you can put your own twist on them or even if you're building a new instrument um, you're putting your own ideas and heart and soul into it and that sort of thing. In an increasingly modern world their place is becoming a little more um, limited and also the interest in them is, is, is becoming a little more limited. The majority of people wouldn't even necessarily have seen a machine like this. Um, so you don't necessarily have that initial interest and, and, uh, uh, and, and recognition of them. Maybe once somebody has seen one um, and heard it, maybe it sparks a little bit of interest. It's the sort of line of work that if you were say an engineer or a carpenter or um, somebody who just had a fascination for mechanisms and this sort of thing. Um, you could come into it from any one of those sort of directions uh, and then expand into the, the, the different areas that it covers. I do love them. <laughs> I mean, I make it. I don't draw. I don't make them to any plans. You know, it's just I've seen that many of them. I just, I just, you know, make it out of my own head, sort of thing. But once I've finished it, I'll just sit there and I'll just look at it. You know, and it's like, oh yeah, you know, <laughs> it's as if I haven't even done it. It's, it's sort of, it's, it's weird, you know. But I just, I just love it. Yeah, great fun. Even church organ building, it's the sort of thing that they're struggling to find multi-skilled people or people who are willing to go through the level of training that's needed to acquire the, the different skills that are needed. Um, uh, the mechanical organ world is a, a, a separate thing but almost on a different level because you incorporate far more engineering um, and um, than, than say in a, a church organ because you've got potentially gears, crankshafts, you've got it's a machine as well as an instrument and um, and to find people who have got the yeah the understanding, the knowledge and the willingness to learn all of that um, is very difficult. I've been in my trade now for over 20 years and, um, and I'm still learning. You, you never stop learning. Yeah. Right.
I think my hopes for the future are that to some degree these things carry on, um, we can generate the interest in them and, um, and show the general public that they are, they are a relative thing, um, they can play any sort of music, modern music, anything you like and that new people come in whether it's from an amateur level or they decide that they want to go into organ building professionally and they carry on learning the skills and, and keeping the things alive. My other half, she, she, um, she was really sort of disappointed because she said, oh, we've only got, we've only got just over 3,000 followers on Instagram, you know. And I said, I said, darling, I said, there's not 3,000 people in the organ world, total, you know. And so I said, that's 3,000 people that, that maybe had never seen one of these before. And they're on there and they're, li they're liking the videos and they're commenting on it. Oh, this reminds me of the seaside or maybe totally unrelated things. But it sparks off some sort of memory, you know. And if, if you've sort of captured the interest of even just a handful of those people, it's still more people that wouldn't have necessarily ever got involved with them. When you hear the things play, especially when you've been that involved, you, you've literally, every single nut, bolt, screw, part, spring, pipe, everything you have had to pieces. And, and then you put that all back together. Or if you've built a new one, you know, you, you, you've literally, you've made every single little piece of it. And then you put it together and and then it works and it looks nice and it sounds nice and, and, and all of that sort of thing. It, it's, it's actually, a, it's a deeply emotional thing um, because you, you, you know, you, you've, you've put your heart and soul into it and, and effectively your heart and soul is, is being played back at you sort of thing. It shows what can be, what can be made with effectively relatively basic materials, um, effectively organs comprise of wood, metal, leather and paint um, and a dab of glue. Um, so it's, it's a technology which is lost, but it's, it's fascinating, it's a visual thing, you can see how things work and it um, and it keeps all those it keeps all those old skills alive there's not very many other trades that, that contain so many different different elements it's the wonderment of it of it all it, on on so many levels and and I think it's it's great when you see people and they they sort of get it they don't necessarily understand what's going on but the overall fascination and wonder of it, um, it is just great to see on their faces you know and 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 um, and, and I love I love that being out with an instrument and um, and you just see you see those little moments they bring a lot of joy they're 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 jolly happy things you know this sort of thing and 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 you do see a lot of people and they just walk past and and, and they do smile they're certainly from my point of view they're a, obviously they're a, they're a, a machine um, that that i have to mend and and this sort of thing but the fun and enjoyment that that they bring and that i get um, is, is priceless really.